Hi there. Now inside of the workbook for students, we're going to, re, uh, to look at section number nine, which states, what is the second coming? Paragraph one, Christ's second coming, which is sure as God, is merely the correction of mistakes and the return of sanity. It is a part of the condition that restores the never lost and reestablishes what is forever and forever true. So what is the second coming? The second coming is our acceptance of what is the Christ inside of us. It's never been lost. We just haven't been aligning with it. It's, it's true and will be true forever. It is true for every single one of us. So what is the second coming? Is simply our correction from mistakes into sanity. This is what we're deciding. No, I am not this depressed, fearful person. I am this powerful being who has created depression and, and fear as an experience for myself because I did not know that I could just abide in my peace. So as much as my sweet boyfriend wanted to not be depressed, when he was being depressed, he did not want to hear his way out of depression. So this second coming is the, I want to hear my way out, out of depression. I am going to align with the Christ in me because I want that part of me to come out because I no longer want to live with that truth hidden in me so that I am living inside of depression, which clouds my perception. It's an insanity. It's an illusion that if my attention is on my, my, the thoughts that cause depression, that cause me to think less of myself, that cause me to feel bad about myself. If I'm believing those thoughts, I can't hear the voice of Christ in me that tells me, I, I don't have to listen to that. It's my point of power is the God essence inside of me. So the second coming is our decision to let the truth of us come forward instead of sending it to the background where it's kept, you know, back in the background and we don't have appear to have access to it. We're saying, no, I don't want to be depressed. I want to be expressed. I want to bring Christ forward and get rid of those depressive thoughts because I don't have to believe them if I don't want to. If I choose to believe the truth and I shift my perception to what is true, then I'm no longer believing what is not true. That's why we have to be vigilant for only the kingdom and choose the thoughts we want to think that are in alignment with the truth. That's the second coming. I am coming to my senses and I am only going to believe what is true about myself. So sentence number three says, it is an invitation to God's word to take illusions place. The willingness to let forgiveness rest upon all things without exception and without reserve. Second coming is I am coming to my senses and I'm deciding that what is true is true. I'm going to forgive myself for operating in illusions and I am going to have the willingness to make sure that I do this without exception and without reserve. I cannot say I want to be uh, happy and then say you are telling me there's something wrong with me because I'm having depressive thoughts. Those two things don't work. You cannot want to get out of something and then validate why you're in it. You will not be able to get out. If you want to experience the second coming of Christ, you got to come to your senses and say, I'm having depressive thoughts. Those are of my ego, which again, require that you see your ego requires an incredible amount of spiritual maturity. This is not, this is not easy. It's simple, but it is not easy. This is years worth of training. And then you come to your senses and in your senses, you say, I'm not going to believe these thoughts anymore. God, what will you have me know? What is the truth about me? Holy Spirit, remind me of my truth. This is when you come inside, you begin to feel the truth in you. And from that feeling of the truth, you are transformed because you have renewed your mind. The Course in Miracles is a course in mind training. We're training our mind to be very clear about two belief systems. Know that one is of God, one is of the ego. And then we're making the choice to shift from fear to love, to shift from ego to God. And when we decide we're going to shift, we forgive ourselves for having chosen differently, for having chosen insanity, for being the source of our own, our, of our own misery. So my boyfriend could not realize that he was the source of his misery because his ego did not want him to give up the misery because the ego feeds off of misery. So I became the source of his misery by telling him how magnificent he was. And yes, I had to go through the sadness, but I had to remind myself that that sadness is just my ego wanting to stay with, with a 
a relationship that its time had completed. And I had to retrain my mind to align with, with God and realize, okay, that was a learning opportunity. It was a call for love. I gave it all that I had. Now I am in, I am in alignment with what I am. So I am open to if there's another lover, if there's another partner, if there's going to be another relationship will come when it's supposed to come because I trust the perfection of everything unfolding. I processed my sadness. I recognized that it was just releasing the ego density. But I did not make myself wrong for wanting to help. And I did not make him wrong for not accepting the help. I recognize that we're two powerful beings creating the experience that we want to have. I am doing it with awareness that I want happiness. He's doing it with lack of awareness that he could choose happiness, that happiness is his birthright. I was in that space for many, many years as I was learning about my power. As I was learning that I could shift, I spent many, many years inside of knowing I could shift, but not being able to do it in the moment. My compassion for him comes from my knowing how long it took me to see my ego and see the ways that it would trick me. And it cost me so much joy, so much happiness, so much peace for many, many, many years. So I have compassion for anybody who cannot shift. Paragraph two, it is the all-inclusive nature of Christ's second coming that permits it to embrace the world and hold you safe within its gentle advent which encompasses all living things with you. It is the all inclusiveness. So I can choose the second coming. So can my boyfriend. If my former boyfriend, if he didn't want to choose it, it's okay. He is powerful beyond measure and he can choose to suffer as long as he wants to. This is an all inclusive deal. Each of us will choose it when we're ready to choose it, when we're ready to give up suffering and we are making a conscious decision to stand and receive what is our, our birthright. That's why we cannot know our holiness. We have to feel the peace that it brings. We have to feel the clarity. We have to feel the confidence that we gain, the certainty of our eternalness. We have to feel it to really realize it inside of us, to make it real. So we have to acknowledge that everybody is where they are, powerful creators, either receiving the second coming or rejecting it. it. That's all it is. If they're rejecting it, it's because they're not ready. Just like it would be unfair to try to take a, a, a caterpillar um, while it enters a cocoon and try to pull it out of the cocoon before it has become a butterfly. <clears throat> so many of us, I know I've done this many, many times, and I even did it with my boyfriend a few times and I had to forgive myself for doing that and asked him to forgive me as well. Once I saw that he, the, the invitation to be helped had been removed and I continued to want to help him into seeing his magnificence, I crossed the line. I was not respecting his power. He wanted to stay in the cocoon. He wasn't ready to fly. So if we try to cut a, a caterpillar while it's in the cocoon, before it is becoming, it's emerging as a butterfly and comes out when it is ready, we are then playing God. Our ego is playing God. It is not aligning with God's will to hear what should, should I say and do for this one in this moment. And if I would have asked for guidance when, when I could sense that, okay, Dan is rejecting uh, my, my uh, observations, if I would have held heard God's voice because I went to God instead of my ego, I would have, I would have heard very gently, let it be. Okay, sweetie, whatever you want to do, it's okay. That's all right. I would have respected, but because I did not respect that probably I am certain compounded his own ideas of me trying to change him and fix him. And then there's validation and she's not respecting me. So I am sure all of that, his ego had a field day, used all of those things to create the separation that it did, but it gave me the opportunity to see my spiritual ego in action, trying to fix somebody who wasn't asking for any help, trying to get the caterpillar out before it actually has become a butterfly. So it, it is an all-inclusive nature. We all have the ability to choose the second coming. There is no end to the release the second coming brings as God's creation must be, uh, must be limitless. 
So there is no end to the release. There is no end to us ever knowing. No possible way we will ever know our holiness because it's so unlimited. We just have to be willing to allow the Christ that we are to come out, to keep coming out. The second coming is let it come out and embody who we are fully. So this is a process of little by little receding the ego and increasing our Christ knowingness. We got to look at our thoughts that are not true and then shift and choose the thoughts that are true. So we the, the ego shifts and drifts and the our essence shifts and lifts. So we have to make that decision ongoing. Forgiveness lights the second coming's way because it shines on everything as one. And thus is oneness recognized at last. When I forgave myself for attempting to help my boyfriend when he, the invitation wasn't there, I forgave myself. But I also forgave myself because I knew that I had been in that same place. This is the oneness that we're experiencing. All of us are one energy pretending that we're separate. So everybody returns to the oneness, to the butterfly aspect of, of oneness when we decide to no longer deny it by being a caterpillar. But while we are being a caterpillar, the process of the second coming is a gradual process that only we can direct because it requires our willingness to move out of victimhood and to move into the space of victory where we are accepting the truth that has been true always, always. All we're doing is accepting it, but it has already been given. Why? Because God already granted it from the beginning. Paragraph three, the second coming ends the lessons that the Holy Spirit teaches. Once you know you, you allow the Christ to be who you are and you're embodied by that and you live by those characteristics of a Christ, Christed beingness, the characteristics that are taught inside of the manual for teachers of joy, of, of trust, of gentleness, of, of uh, patience, of open-mindedness, once you trust that and you are living from that, you don't need the voice of the Holy Spirit to guide you. You shift yourself automatically into what is true because that Holy Spirit is the spirit that is actually the Christ that you now are listening to. So let me read this again. The second coming ends the lessons that the Holy Spirit teaches, making way for the last judgment in which learning ends in one last summary that will extend beyond itself and reach us up to God. So once you accept that joy is who you naturally are, you don't need to that lesson from the Holy Spirit. Once you choose joy because you know that that's how you are expressing what God is, what is there to learn? You're being what you are. There's no need to learn. But when you, while you're in judgment, you're in sadness, you need to learn. Then we go to the Holy Spirit to teach us. Once we learn the truth that I am joy, then we welcome it by 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 allowing God Christ to come out. So the second coming is we're letting the Christ in us come out. We are embodying it. We are removing the mask that covers the Christ and we are the essence of it. And joy is a characteristic of being Christ. So you just accept the joy wherever you can uh, where you look for it everywhere because it's it's with the eyes of God that you see joy everywhere. So the second coming is a time in which all minds are giving to the hands of Christ. You, you trust that the truth of Christ is the truth of you, is the truth of everybody else. I trust that Dan is in the hands of Christ. He will have his awakening whenever he's supposed to have it. Whatever I brought to his life was what I was supposed to do. Whatever I don't bring anymore is what I'm not supposed to bring. Just as whatever he added to my life is perfect and whatever he is no longer bringing to my life is perfect. Because those encounters, as it is taught in the Course in Miracles, everything has a season, a time, a place. The encounters are going to be, some are short-term, some are long-term. That was short-term, but it has left me with a profound awareness that was necessary for me to be more of the embodiment of the Christ consciousness, more gentleness, more open-mindedness, more joy, absolutely more joy and more trust, without a doubt. So the second coming is the time in which all minds are given to the hands of Christ to be returned to spirit in the name of the of true creation and the will of God. I know the will of God is for me to be happy. Dan doesn't know that that's the will of God because it's not what he has been studying. It's not what he, the Holy Spirit has been teaching him because he hasn't been open to hearing that. 
until he opens up to hearing that. Instead of watching movies about wars and reading books about wars, and he would listen or watch movies or, or read books about the truth of who he is, his mind is not being trained to know truth. Therefore, he cannot choose truth. And I had to have compassion for that. He doesn't know what he doesn't know. He only knows what he knows, and that's what he defends when he blocks out what is unknown to him. I did it too. We all do that too. Paragraph four. The second coming is the one event in time which time itself cannot affect. For everyone who ever came to die or yet will come or who is present now is equally released from what he made. In this equality is Christ restored as one identity in which the sons of God acknowledge that they are all one. Once we accept that what we are is pure, pure non-physical energy, that what we are is the essence of, of non-physical Christness, consciousness, energy. Once we accept that, there is no more death. There is no more time. There is simply the eternalness that we are abiding with knowing that if it happens now, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If I meet another lover, I meet them in this lifetime. If I don't, I don't. If it happens in another lifetime, if it happens in three, that peace comes from a place of knowing that I, I am eternal. So my patience is incredible because I don't need to have anything come to me before it's meant to come to me because I'm trusting the perfection of all that is unfolding. I trust that God knows my holiness and I don't. So things that are supposed to show up to be part of my experience will show up at the right and perfect time because my desire is to live my life in peace. And I don't, I don't remember ever Christ teaching us ever that he couldn't wait for the end of his life to come and get it over with quick. It was going to come when it was going to come because he knew that there was no such thing as end of life. There was just a dropping of the body. And inside of the dropping of the body, he has remained for the last 2,000 years talking to us. Talk about patience. Look how long it's taking us, you and me, reading these lessons to even begin to really accept them as the truth of who we are. Christ came out 2,000 years ago to show us what a, the characteristics of one who embodies the essence of, of Jesus, the essence of God, the essence of Christ is all about. Look, 2,000 years. So if my boyfriend couldn't get it in eight months, well, he may need another 1,000 years. That Who knows? That's not up to me. But it's taken me 2,000 years to figure it out. So I can't be upset with somebody that couldn't get it in eight months or eight weeks. And that's where we have to have tolerance because we can't judge somebody's path. We, we don't know when it's right for them. And our work is to be patient, not only with them, but with ourselves. So sentence number four in paragraph four, and God the Father smiles upon his son, his one creation and his only joy. We are God's joy. And when we know that God is, is the essence of Christ consciousness expressing itself through us, that is our joy because as the sons of God, we're here to be the presence of joy on this planet. It wasn't until I began to enjoy my sweetheart being all caught up in his story that I, I began to return to being patient and kind. And uh, I didn't laugh in his face because I would not have been kind, but I, I had to get really truthful he is, the soul that he is, is enjoying this journey, is enjoying whatever it is that he has to manifest to get the evidence that he needs to, to see things differently, to choose to do things differently. Maybe I was the one who activated enough things that with another partner, he may be able to choose. But with me, I was maybe just the one who, who helped him see that he retreated. I don't know. But if I got used in any way, I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful for any way that God uses me to affect anybody's life. It doesn't matter how it is, whether it's with a smile to a stranger or whether it was with a situation with Dan or with my former husband or with my children. I am so grateful that I know that I can trust everything is unfolding exactly as it should. Paragraph five, pray that the second coming will be soon. But do not rest with that. And this is really key. 
once you know that the second coming can happen, you want to make sure that it comes sooner than later. But don't rest with that. It needs your eyes and ears and hands and feet. It needs your voice. And most of all, it needs your willingness. Let us rejoice that we can do God's will and join together in its holy light. So I know you are coming here willingly to get these lessons. So somebody who's not willing to hear, they're not ready. But once we know that this is a choice, why delay it? Why not accept what is already yours right now? It would be like somebody gives you a gift for your birthday and it's exactly what you've wanted. Let's say it's a beautiful watch and it's it's exactly what you wanted and it fits you perfectly. And then you put it on your dresser and you leave your house and you go, darn, I wish I knew what time it was. I wish I knew what time it was. And you, you're you late to your meetings because you don't have your watch on. Well, you have to make the choice to be willing to put that watch on. You have the watch in your house, but if you're showing up late, it's because you are deciding to not accept the gift that has already been given. We've been given. We've been given something more precious than a watch. We've been given timelessness. We've been given love. We've been given joy. We've been given peace. Why not wear it? Why not let Christ come out? Accept the second coming. Accept what has been given to you. You are powerful beyond measure. We are holy beyond our possible awareness of what holiness is. All we need to do is say, God, show me what that is. Let me feel it today. Let me experience this. Let me trust. Let me be patient. Let me be kind. Let me be joyful. And as you begin to use those gifts that have been given to you, you're making manifest what has already been given. This is absolutely so amazing. Behold, the Son of God is one in us, and we can reach our Father's love through Him. This is why we join with people who are like-minded. There is there's a desire to connect so that we can be uplifted. When we cannot join with people who, who vibrate at this level, we are going to have to disconnect. It has to happen. It is inevitable because those frequencies are too far apart. It is not a judgment. It's an understanding some are choosing to stay in fear. Some are choosing to rise into love. When you lift into love, you uplift others who want to come. You stay here and if they want to come, they'll make the trek just as you made the trek. Nobody took you from fear and placed you in love and then you were done. You made the trek as I made the trek one choice at a time, one shift in consciousness at a time, one shift of looking at things with my ego to looking at them with God. And I am 16 years on this journey, 16 years and counting, helping people for the past 12 years because it took me, it took me four years to get comfortable enough to begin to share what I was discovering. And it then took me a good 10 years to really know the truth was true and I could count on it at all times. It wasn't until about that 10th year that I was able to forgive myself pretty quickly and shift and lift pretty quickly. 10 years. We have to be kind with ourselves. The truth is inside of us. A gift has been given. When we have the awareness that it is there, all we need to do is accept it and out comes Christ. The second coming is our willingness to accept that gift given to us for all of eternity Regardless of how many lifetimes it takes us to receive it, there's no right or there's no wrong. That's why judgment is, is useless. It is simply a matter of we have to feel comfortable and little by little we will create the expansion in our consciousness to receive that beautiful gift. Because we, we have to get to the place that we feel worthy to receive our holiness. And every step is a step towards our worthiness. Acknowledging it and claiming it. Dan wasn't ready to be worthy of hearing that he could be peaceful instead of depressed, that he could be happy instead of fearful, that he could have all kinds of energy instead of feeling um, depleted. He didn't know that, that that was his right. He doesn't. So he did all that he could do for himself, which was to reject it and see it as, you're telling me that I'm not okay. Well, you know what? In a way, that was him using his voice, using his power of choice. And maybe one day he can say, wow, if I chose to reject my worth, then maybe I can choose to accept my worth. I had to do that. And it took me 10 years of practicing that choice before I finally said, wow, I really am 
this worthy, magnificent child of God. And I was teaching this before I could fully accept it as my truth. And now I know my worth. I know my holiness. I know that that is what I am because I feel it inside. Every single time I align with God and I say, God, what would you have me do? The kindness that pours out of me is indescribable, indescribable. I cannot express the the feeling of the joy, the aliveness. I mean, it's so beautiful. It brings tears to my eyes because it's so overwhelming to have so much love that just wants to pour out, out of me. This is the promise of the second coming, but you have to choose it. It will not be forced upon you. Just like if I give you a gift, I'm not going to force you to wear it. You have to choose to wear it. You have to choose to claim it. Thanks a bunch. I'll see you in the next lesson.